Okay, so today we're going to talk about that little scene you just saw, um, how I did it, and um, basically I was practicing working with particles and um, tracers. So um, let's have a look here. Um, as I said, I used tracers with, partic with a particle emitter um, to create the scene, and... Um, what I also did is I use some, uh, I use a field force and a turbulent. Uh, I also rendered this in Octane. Uh, let me see if I can bring up the, show you the uh, render settings here. Okay, so I did it in 48, uh, 3840 by 2180. Um, let's See if there's anything. Made sure I used all, you know, used. Well, I only have one GPU, but I said it that way. Uh, I did create ABC groups that seem to work in, but they didn't seem to come through when I was trying to play with them in um, in Resolve. Uh, well, we'll take a look at that. Um, one of the reasons I used Octane, it was basically twice as fast. Even when I made some changes to the Redshift settings uh, to make it more, to try to get it to run a little bit quicker. And in particular, I turned off the CPU, which is supposed to make it faster by forcing it to use the GPU. But, um, and what else do we need to know? Um, this is important. I saved the emitter and the tracer as alembics uh, so I can turn off the actual uh, calculations here. Reason being that um, it's faster. Doesn't ha you don't have to um, doesn't ha it it's already has something so. It does seem to work a bit faster when you do it that way because all the calculations have been made. Uh, it still slows up a little because of the amount that it has to generate towards the end, but not nearly as much as uh, if you don't do it that way. I believe when I just tried Redshift without the optimizations and without Alembics, I think it took over an hour to do the last frame. I think I got it down to about seven minutes. Uh, this was in Redshift Octane. I think I got down to about three minutes. Um, let's see. How did I render these things? So for the tracer, I used an Octane object tag, and I rendered it as hair, as you can see right here. Um, with the emitter, let me show you the actual emitter here. I used the sphere as an object, so I had it... Um, let's see, particle, show objects. So that's what I did for that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, I used in the background an octane sky and I didn't use an HDRI. I just used, um, just did a gradient. It seemed to work better, look better than just the plain like if you used lights or something like that. Uh, I did a camera move. I kind of moved it in uh, on the thing, on the object. That um, So those are the key parts. Now, one thing about the forces, it's hard to see because of the number of particles I have. And let me turn this off. If you want to test it, the best way I found... I copied the emitter and the forces in there. Okay, so I um, wanted to talk to you a little bit more about rendering, in particular the arbitrary output values, which are the different layers that you can use to control things better in, um, in, in your editor. Um, when you go, you can composite them together if you're using um, Premiere Pro, if you're using Resolve, if you're using Nuke. Uh, so, you look at this, we're going to render, 
and you can see a bunch of passes. So main here, you diffuse, you diffuse indirect. Let's see what else we got here. This will let's make this a little smaller. There we go. All right. So we have diffuse indirect. We have that's diffuse direct. This is diffuse indirect. We have reflection. We have reflection direct. We have reflection indirect. We have shadow, ambient occlusion, motion vectors, and Z depth, which we don't really see too much. So what you can do in post is you can put them together and adjust them how you'd like. Now, I ran into some kind of some issue with Resolve that I'm going to have to figure out that basically, even though they're clearly in the file, they were not coming up as such when I put it in Resolve. Um, what's supposed to happen is when you go into Fusion and you bring the uh, clip in, it's supposed to have all these different passes. So that's something I'm going to have to figure out uh, why that, in fact, happened. But um, it does allow you to have the greater control. And um, you start basically with the diffuse, and then you add the different, different things to it and build up back to your beauty pass. But the nice thing is, Let's say you feel you need more reflection. You can turn that up separately. Uh, you're not, you don't have to use the baked in reflection that is in your, that is in the, the beauty pass. If you want, um, you know, more lighting, uh, or more, dif you know, you can adjust these different things. Uh, more ambient inclusion, uh, whatever it is, you can control that. Uh, if you're using volumes, they have different volume passes, volume, volume mission, volume mass. They have a, if you can see on, on the left, on the volume right here. So it's, it's, um, it's very handy to have those, especially if you're trying to really optimize your uh, final video. Now let's get to how I rendered it, and that's going to be here. Um, you know how I took the not the, the EXRs. Let me show you how I did the EXRs. And I took the EXRs and I put them in here. Uh, this is DaVinci Resolve, and I played a little bit with the color and uh, try to make it look a little bit. Get the get the the look a little bit nicer. Actually, I didn't do anything too too sophisticated here. Um, I what I did do is to the color page. I just put a little LUT here, which seemed to have helped make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, let's go here. And you can see, and I think it's control D. You can see this makes it pop a little bit more. Um, one thing to be very aware of, and I ran into, is let me go back to the edit page. I created optimized, yeah, optim generally optimized media at one point and then when I put in a, ch a different version it didn't change I'm like what's going on I couldn't figure it out I verified I looked at the XRs you know the output was correct I put it in um, Premiere and it was correct uh, the problem was it was picking up that optimized media and what I did here is I um, just basically regenerated the optimized media with the with the new uh, information. Now you're probably better off instead of doing optimized media, doing proxy media. But again, if you run into problems, 
regenerate it and should it should fix it. And um, that pretty well uh, summarizes it. Uh, this is kind of fun and um, you can, well, we can go here and scrub through the final output and you see got the little glowy spears at the end and I made the front, the uh, used hair, which made kind of a translucent pink here. I made it like a, a pink. The lighting was a little tricky because it, it's so dense that it gets really dark in here and probably went a little overboard there, but at any rate, um, that was my little experiment with uh, my little particle practice. So, um, thank you for watching. And, uh, again, if you enjoy this, uh, subscribe, give a like, any, anything, uh, that's always helpful. And, uh, thank you again. Take care.